Let me tell you a little story. I remember the first time I ever took on a large automotive project. I was 16 years old and needed to replace the water pump in my 92 GMC Sierra 1500. I did what every 16 year old did at the time, right? A video clip shows a boy who appears to be no older than 12 behind the wheel of a big rig as it cruises down a country highway. Mind you, this was 2009, of course, but I hit the forums, I checked Facebook, I asked a few friends, and I found at least three YouTube videos that showed me exactly how to do the task at hand. Then on a bright, sunny summer morning, I pulled the truck into the old dirt floor shop, tore it all apart, and realized that no matter how much planning you do, things almost never go according to plan. I learned a lot that day, including that if you throw a 9 16 inch wrench across the shop, it'll actually stick into the sheet steel wall of the shed. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> While throwing tools out of sheer frustration is something that I did try to leave in the past, one thing that I did carry with me was that there are always unforeseen struggles when it comes to big truck projects, including installing a lift kit on your truck. But what if you've never lifted your truck before? What can you expect? How will things go? Are there things to watch out for? Here's the good news. I'm Dust with the Custom Offsets. You guys can follow me at dusty.co on Instagram. And today we're going over the top five things that I wish someone would have told me before I lifted my truck. Let's get into it. As we jump down this rabbit hole of broken bolts, long nights, and a few too many bush lattes, if you're looking to pick up a lift kit for your truck, you can do that at customoffsets.com. We also carry things like headlights, intakes, exhausts, and even flash tuners so that your truck can look good and not take forever to get up the highway speeds on the on-ramp. All right, so first things first, the number one thing that I wish someone would have told me before I lifted my truck is that patience is absolutely necessary. Given the current state of the global economy, it's no secret or surprise that lift kits are taking a little bit of time to arrive to our doorsteps. Now, this is mostly due to a major shortage of raw materials like aluminum and steel, which are slowing down manufacturing across pretty much all brands of lift kits. I'll save you guys the lecture of how macroeconomics work, but the important part here is that, well, yes, lift kits are delayed, it's not all doom and gloom. While lead times do vary, I can say with certainty that companies like BDS, Zone, Rough Country, and Superlift all have some limited availability for in-stock shipments. Better yet, they also have great lead times on kits that are out of stock. I know that we personally just ordered a BDS four and a half inch kit and a six inch Superlift kit, and both of them arrived within a few short weeks. So while it's less than ideal than the two day shipping you can get on bath towels from Amazon, it's really not that bad. Second up on this list is something I think a few people told me to do when installing my lift kit, but I didn't take any of them seriously until after we got the truck tore apart. When you're installing them, you pretty much take the entire front end of your truck apart, like all of it. Even if you're not taking the parts off your truck, access to them is much easier when you've got everything else out of the way. When you're installing a lift kit, it's almost too easy to not tackle some basic maintenance while you're in there. If you're a GM guy, things like pitman arm and idler arm and tie rod ends are pretty simple to get at because you've got the truck tore apart. Furthermore, now that you have the upper and lower control arms out, it's a great time to replace things like ball joints, wheel bearings, or even the control arms themselves. When we did the Duramax build, we tore it all apart and replaced pretty much everything in the front end with high quality parts like kryptonite so that it's ready for the abuse that bigger, wider wheels and tires are gonna throw at it. Up next, the third thing on this list that I wish someone would have told me about lifting my truck was that it's going to take some time. Now I know what you're thinking here, right? But Dustin, the lift kit manual says it'll tell you how long it takes to install it. Wrong! The manual is gonna tell you how long it takes one of their techs who does it every day and is factory trained on a brand new truck with a two post lift and all the specialty tools you could need it's going to take it. What the manual won't tell you though is how long the lift kit's gonna take you to install it on a 14 year old pickup that spent its entire life above the Rust Belt in Wisconsin and has some frozen bolts along the way. Seriously, one of the biggest things that I wish I had properly accounted for going into my build was making sure that I gave myself enough time to do what I needed to do without jeopardizing my commute to work, my plans with the family, or other things that I may have needed my truck for. All in all, the lift kit on my truck took somewhere between three and four days longer than we had expected it to do, so be sure to budget additional time in case you run into any hiccups along the way. Greg, I'm looking at you. I know that you're thinking about lifting your truck, 
and that's why you're watching this video and that's cool but man you've got to subscribe to the channel come on how else are you going to keep up with all the custom offsets content that you've come to love all right so real talk for just a moment I have no idea who Greg is, but I'm convinced that if I yell a random person's name at least once in a video, that it'll catch someone off guard and make them subscribe. So kudos to you, Greg. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps out a lot. All right, back to the video. The next thing I wish someone would have told me before I lifted my truck is that my ride quality was going to change. Now, important note here, this isn't necessarily for the worse if you're in a particular situation like mine. My Duramax, it's got some age on it. It's aged like fine wine, except it's got a few more miles and more dings and dents, but it does still just get better with age, personal opinion. And with age comes wear and tear on your factory suspension components like shocks and struts, etc. One of the biggest things I learned when I fired up my truck for the first time after lifting it was that it rode significantly more firm than it did with the stock parts. This was due to new shocks that we installed on all four corners of the truck. While my experience was quite positive, there are some guys out there I know whose ride quality has actually decreased after they installed a lift kit. I mean, let's face it, you're putting more space into the factory suspension and ultimately you're altering the geometry of that suspension. So it's no surprise that it may not ride as well as it once did. Best thing I can say here is that to maintain the most ride quality, invest in high quality shocks. We're talking companies like King, Fox Racing, and Bilstein, and they all make fantastic riding shocks that really help smooth out that ride and keep your truck comfortable on those long journeys. Last, and certainly not least, is that if you're in any one of the great northern Midwest states and you have this cool thing called winter where the air hurts your face and we get a bunch of snow, then you're gonna wanna prepare yourself for dealing with none other than rust. Before we go any further, let me tell you, I know a thing or two about rust. So we may have torn into my truck and it may have been a little less than stellar. I mean, rust really sucks. There's, there's no two ways about it. See, this is the part in the video where the editor can plop in the clip of not one, not two, not three, but six different guys trying to beat the shit out of my lower control arm with a sledgehammer to get it off the torsion bar. Listen, it was not a fun time. I don't think Banker loves my truck as much as he used to anymore and probably for good reason. Now, not only that, but not to mention all the other stuff that we had to literally cut off my truck with various cutting devices. Fact of the matter here is that if you're lifting a truck that's more than a few years old, you're going to want to plan for worst case scenario. Usually this comes in the means of budgeting a few extra dollars so you can replace any of the parts that you may have had to cut into two pieces on the way out. It really is just a fact of life if you live in a Northern state like I do, but it's still something to keep in mind if you're looking at lifting your truck. So what's something that you guys wish someone would have told you before you lifted your truck? Drop a comment down below and let me hear all of your wonderful words of advice. I'll be reading through every comment on my own and I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. And as always, be sure to like the video and maybe share it with a couple, two, three friends so that way they can enjoy it just as much as you do. And with that, we'll see you on the next one.